Just the smell of these remind me of home. Well, this is home for you. Sure. For now, isn't it? Yeah. What'd you do while I was out? Oh, nothing, really. Why? I wanted to find out if you were bored. Which apparently you weren't. You had company, didn't you? You weren't going to tell me, were you? It's a waste of time. Hardly. I promised I'd help you get control of Spalding, and that's what I'm going to do. Well, that's the mess you made of things earlier. Maybe my father was right. Maybe I would be better off on my own. I thought we'd gotten past that. Maybe you have, but I'm not sure I want to work with somebody whose mind is on everything but our future. My mind is on finding the files. That's it. told me how you found out about these so-called files. Maybe they don't even exist. Oh, they exist all right. My source is very reliable. Who is it? I want real answers. I'm sorry, I can't tell you. At least not yet. And you better find those files fast. Otherwise, our partnership is over. I thought I'd uh, stop by, see how you're doing after you've, uh, after you know you found out all that information about your sister and all. I don't want to talk about it. Well, not talking about it isn't going to make it go away. There's nothing you can do anymore, Joshua. Just try to get rid of me. I think I figured out a way to find your sister. How? Do you really think I can find her? Well, I'm not going to stop until you do. What about Annie? And Joshua, you can't just keep showing up here uh, unannounced. I didn't just show way. up. I have a legitimate reason for being here. I'm here to pick up my children. That's an excuse, and you know Well, it. it's a valid excuse. Besides that, I'm, I'm not just doing this for you. I'm doing it for Sarah. I loved your mother as much as I love my own mother. I'm going to do everything I can to help you keep your promise I just to her. don't think there's anything else we can do. Well, I do. So let me in. Let me help you. Okay? You got a picture of Sarah, an older picture that was taken maybe around the time that she had the baby? Uh, I think so. I mean, I've got a box of old family photos let's, over here. Let's look at it. Let's see what we got, okay? They're not very organized, though. That's okay. I, I was just going through them the other day. <clears throat> we just need one picture, that's all. You still haven't told me why you think this is going to help me find my sister. Well, we're going to take the picture we're fine. We're going to take it over to Holly and Fletcher at the journal and ask them for their help. We're going to ask them to run it in, in, in the journal and in newspapers all around, the, all around the world, if that's what we have to do. And the hope is that your sister will see that picture, and if she wants to contact you, she will. I mean, I'm going to have to light a fire on your daddy because, you know, she's really letting down the job here. Look at this. Well, oh. just go easy on her because Amanda was lecturing her this morning about making the bed. Oh, okay, I will, I will. By the way, Alan, yeah. our dinner for Roger and Amanda this evening, it is still on, is it not? Oh, I think by all means. You saw how she stood by her man earlier. I think we're going to have to up the stakes. Well, good. I just love these family dinners. They're 
so much more always than just food. Annie, are you going to be joining us? Oh, no, I don't think so. Annie, don't be so hasty. Uh, I'm going to talk her into it. Well, whatever. I can't stay for dinner, Alan. Annie, we have an agreement. I know we do, and I will be glad to help you, but I can't stay I for dinner. I think this will be a perfect opportunity for you to befriend Amanda. No, 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 no. Josh is waiting for me at home. Well, then call him and tell him you're going to be late. I can't. He wasn't exactly thrilled when I told him that I didn't quit this job the other day. In fact, he was pretty angry. Alan, I can't jeopardize my marriage. Not now. Not after all the work that I put into it. All the work you put into it? You didn't do this alone. I was hoping I wouldn't have to say that to you. No, I, I do, and I appreciate it. And now that Reva is looking for a long-lost sister, she doesn't have time to be with Josh. But I, I want to be with Josh. I'm trying to make him fall in love with me again. And he will. Well, I hope so. <sighs> okay, all right. Oh, what exactly do you want me to do with Amanda? Everything. I want you to find out her feelings about this upcoming wedding. Yeah. And okay. I want you to report back to me on it, okay? And what makes you think she's going to be honest with me? I hardly know her. Well, she won't tell the truth to the people who know her best. So, Annie, you are my only shot. Okay. I'll try. Good. This is about my spending time with my family yesterday, isn't it? Only in the sense that if you had been paying attention to business, you wouldn't have ruined that deal, and you wouldn't have made both of us look like fools in front of my family. What do you care what they think of you? After their treatment of you? Come on, what's this really about? Just what I told you. I think it's still about howling. <laughs> no, it's not. It's about you helping me get to the top of Spalding. That was our deal. Yes, and the files I'm going to find for you will do just that. How do you know that? I mean, you don't even know what's in them. I'm told the contents will bring the current rain at Spalding to its knees. As I said, I trust my source. That my stunning fiancé is why you need me. Well, I'd buy more of what you're saying if you would... If your focus weren't so split these days. At the risk of repeating myself, my focus isn't split. No. Are you sure? I, I've, I've always had to share you with something or someone since the day we started this partnership. First it was Diane and Hart, now it's Blake and her problems. I hate to sound cold, but if Blake had twins by two different fathers, that's really her problem. She's my daughter. Lay off! Don't speak to me that way, Roger. I've had to put up with that from my father and my aunt since I got back to Springfield. I'm damn well not going to put up with it you from know, you. You know, my daughter's very important to me. I know that. I know, but I'm losing patience, all right? All this talk, all this work, and nothing seems to be different from the day we started. Things are going to seem very different when you're sitting in the president's chair deciding whether you want your Aunt Alex to be the new cashier in the Spalding cafeteria or your secretary, or you might just fire her. Now you're talking. What about your father, huh? I've always thought Alan would make a marvelous maintenance man. He's so very fastidious. I bet he'd do wonders with a dustpan and broom. Well, huh? oh, if only. Ah, uh, not if, when. You're that sure of yourself? Listen, if I don't deliver as promised, you may throw me out with the morning's coffee grounds. You can count on that. But if you dump me now, you'll be ending what could have been the greatest alliance since Caesar and Cleopatra. If I remember correctly, they both wound up dead. Everybody dies. You and I will rewrite history. Now, come on. Let me see that famous smile. We do want your father <laughs> and Alex to see how happy we are. Ah, time to go. We don't want to be late to the dinner they're preparing for us, do we? I wasn't going to tell you that Jeffrey stopped by while you were out. You know what I think? I think he dropped it on purpose. I think he wanted me to think he was here. Oh, no, no. I'm sure he didn't even know. He's no, lost yeah. it. Cat burglar doesn't know when he drops jewelry. How long was he here? Uh, not long. Just while you were out getting cereal. Oh, uh, so I started just 
popped in, said hi, how was jail, see you around, and then dashed off. Something like that, right? Really, Buzz, he wasn't here very long at all. Wait a second. He was already here when I came back the first time. That's why you were all nervous and out of breath. Am I right? True? Yes. Well, isn't that just nice? <laughs> he was here listening to us. Well, where was he? Up there? And that's why you sent me out. I felt I should deal with him on my own. Even though I asked you not to, even though I asked you to talk to me, tell me this the moment that he showed up. I mean, what are you trying to do? You're trying to screw yourself up? Is that it? If you'd let me explain, I'll explain. No, to you. no, I don't want you and your explanations. You can hold on to them. Hold on to the lies for a second, okay? This guy, he leaves you holding a bag full of jewels, snatches your kid, doesn't tell you where he's going, and then tries to blackmail you into staying with him. And now I'm supposed to believe he dropped by for like tea and crumpets? That doesn't explain away. I mean, what? You're on probation for crying out loud. Well, he is my husband. No, Jeffrey no, is still no, my no, husband. no, no. Come on, we settled this. It's too late for all that. His wife is out of jail and living with her child under my roof and under my recognizance. I don't want to see you hurt. I'm not worried about me getting yeah, hurt. Yeah, but I am. So please, what was Jeffrey doing? The truth. No lies this time. He wanted me to go back with him. I don't know. Oh, I really wish you would reconsider and come over here tonight, Philip. It's only a dinner, for heaven's sakes. All right, if we're to win against Amanda and Roger, my dear, we are all going to have to stand together, you know. Or in this case, sit together and break some bread. I know, but if your father and I can tolerate it, surely you can. I think we're the first ones here. Unless they all change their minds. Ready, darling? Ready. If you can finagle a moment alone, meet me in the study. We haven't finished looking there, all right? See what I can do. Coward, but I still love you. Well, it isn't our guests of honor. No. Good evening, Alex. I must admit, I'm surprised tonight's dinner is still on. For heaven's sakes, why? Well, you and Alan were very unhappy with me. Oh, please. Really, Roger, I hope you didn't take that to heart. That's business. Everyone's allowed a little slip up now and then. Please, come on in. Let's get past that anyway. There's more important things to think about. Your upcoming wedding. Absolutely. Sit down, sit down, sit down. Thank you. Amanda, you look absolutely lovely. Doesn't she? <laughs> look, I've got something I want to show you. What is it? Well, this is a list of all the orchestras in this state. I and mean, Alan picked one, but I didn't think it was quite appropriate for the wedding. And after all, we do want the very best, don't we? You look at this, Roger. Mm, well, actually, better still, we should listen to it. You're gonna have to make a choice fairly soon. You see, as the agent was telling me, these orchestras are literally booked ahead years in advance. Somehow. Thank you, Alex. That's very kind. We'll listen to it later. Mm. When we're alone. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you are. Ah, huh? oh, I thought I heard you two in here. Welcome. Oh, thank you, Father. Very nice of you. Annie? Listen, I hope you don't mind. I've asked Annie to join us for dinner. Not see. at all. <sighs> It's nice to see you again, Amanda. Really? Why? It'll give us a chance to start over again. I think that we got off on the wrong foot, don't you? Now that is something I like. Someone as direct as I am. <laughs> that would be very nice. I'm glad you could come. Well, I gather from this dinner that this is a celebration of your upcoming wedding. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> I am a lucky man. Oh, stop it. I'm the lucky one. I can hardly wait to hear all about the wedding plans. Well, it's moving along at quite a clip, thanks to Father. Oh, yes, he's very excited. I guess that's how men are with their only daughter. I can attest to that. I guess so. Well, May's not too far away. You don't really have that much time, do you? Alex, our guests don't have a drink. Right, I'll have a vodka. Let me help. Right, Roger. Oh. What can I get? Oh, uh, bourbon straight up. Amanda, 
Um, you'll find when the wedding comes that it doesn't matter how handsome the groom is, the bride is always the star of the show. So tell me about your gown. What does it look like? Oh, I haven't really picked one oh, yet. Oh, oh, don't worry about it. Maybe we could go shopping sometime together. I have some bridal magazines at home. Would you like me to bring them next time I come? Yeah, that... That would be great. Thanks. You're welcome. Thank you. No, Joshua, I'm not going to let you plaster a picture of Mama all over the country. I mean, people would know that she had a baby out of wedlock. Lisa, come on, it's the 90s. Nobody's going to care. My mother wasn't pregnant in the 90s. It was a totally different era. And it just messed her up. She didn't know what to do. It was a terrible time for her. She was so ashamed. That's why she gave the baby up for adoption in the first place. And she kept that secret all those years. Pop didn't even know about it. I won't let her picture be plastered all over everything. I won't do it. I won't do it to her. Okay. And for so long, I never gave Mama enough credit. I was one of those daughters that always thought that their mother didn't know anything, but... the truth was that my mother made the world go round. Her love and her ideals and her sacrifices, that's the kind of stuff that pulls life together. And when push came to shove, that pulled my life together. My mama was everything good to me in this world. To Pop and Rusty and Roxy, too. That's what I want people to remember about her. Anything else would be wrong. What? Why are you looking at me like that? You, you think I'm crazy? No, I don't think you're crazy. I'm just thinking about how much I'm seeing of you right now. I mean, I feel like I'm seeing inside of your heart. You obviously loved your mother very much. You know as well as I do that Mom and I had our troubles. That we didn't see eye to eye. Oh, who am I kidding? We fought like cats and dogs, but what we felt for each other always won out. And it always pulled us together in the end. Sounds like us. Did you get your homework done? Mine is Morris and Bud. She's had a lot. All right, all right. I want you guys to head on upstairs, get your stuff together, and when you're ready, we'll go, okay? Okay. Go, go. I'm going to tell on you next time, Shane. Go upstairs and help your brother. I will. What are you looking at? You and Mama. He looked exactly like he did in my dream last week. to interrupt. I thought you were in the powder room. I was just on my way. What are you doing? Oh, well, there's a few minutes before dinner, so I thought I'd pick up a little bit, check your father's wheelchair, finally put these away. <laughs> uh, it's great that your father's walking again so soon, don't you think? Oh, it's terrific. It's yeah. just terrific. Yeah, now he can walk you down the aisle at your wedding. Mm -hmm. I didn't have that at my wedding, but it was really great having Josh's children in the ceremony. I'll bet. Uh, I know this isn't any of my business, but babies have been on my mind a lot lately. When are you and Roger planning on having some? Oh, well, I don't know. I haven't, we haven't thought about it yet. Oh, no? Oh, that's funny. You're just so organized. I thought you would have nailed that one down by now. <laughs> a house? Are you planning on living here? Well, you know, we, we really haven't thought of it. It's all the business, too much to Annie. I'm, 
I'm glad that you're so interested. I'm getting but, on your nerves. No, 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 no. Why would you say that? Well, you're just looking around the room. Is there something that I can help you find? No, I'd be glad to. No, no, I'm not looking for any... I... I have to powder my nose. <laughs> See if I got this right now. Knowing your husband Jeffrey as I think I do, he didn't accept your answer, did he? Uh, he didn't take it very well. No, I didn't think so. So what happened next? I told him that I didn't want to be in the business with him anymore. And? Uh, and he said we made a deal when we married, and that I had a week to change my mind. Well, he's going to have to wait a little longer well, than that. No, you know, I both. I think that it's not going to work. I'm going to have to go with him. It's the only way to do it. Don't tell me there isn't any other way. Especially when it involves you. Oh, that could be Jeffrey. D D I'm don't, not don't afraid I... of him. I'm not. Listen, Mr. Morgan, if you got some threats, um... threaten me. Um... Buzz Cooper? I. Sorry, I thought it was somebody else. I... What can I do for you? Uh, this is for you. Yeah. I need a signature, too, principal. Yeah. Because you didn't jump bail, the diner no longer has a lien on it. Oh, Buzz, that's wonderful news. No kidding. I'm going somewhere. Oh, where are you going? I'll go with you. No, you got that backwards. I don't have to tell you where I'm going. You have to tell me where you're going. Now I'm going to tell you something. You're going to listen to me this time. I'm going to go out that door. You're going to lock it. And if Jeffrey shows up, you're not going to deal with him. You're not even going to talk to him until I get back. And I won't be long. Okay. what I do and don't mean. I mean, Mara almost caught us kissing. We're her parents. No, Joshua, we're not married. You're married to Annie, her stepmother. How do you think this makes me feel? I mean, it's so screwed up that we can't even let our daughters see us kiss or, see, but or we hug. didn't do anything wrong. We, we didn't do anything that would hurt Mara and Shay. We couldn't do anything like that. The love that we have for each other, the love that made them, is what's going to get us through I don't, I, I, it has I just to. don't think I can do this anymore. I don't think I can wait anymore. I don't think I can pretend that I don't love you anymore. I can't. I, I can't be with you. Not yet. And, of course, we're going to, want to invite the entire board to the wedding and to the reception. Of course. I think it'll be a wonderful opportunity to show the world that the Spaldings and Roger Thorpe are going to be a force to be reckoned with. Here you are, darling. Is it time for dinner yet? <laughs> Hi, I'm... I, I, I know I, I won't be here long. Hey there, cutie. Hi. Wow, what a guest list. I hope you're not serving anything that requires sharp utensils. <laughs> Hello, Buzz. Buzz, uh, listen, we're having a family dinner. The least you could have done was call before you came here. Oh, come on, Alan. Stop being so pompous. You know Buzz is one of my very best friends. Yes, well, friends don't bilk other friends out of $15,000 to free their ex-girlfriends out of jail. On that note, you... we'll take our leave. You told them. She told you about Jenna's problem. Go on, Alan, for your information. No one bilked anyone out of anything. 
I gave it to Buzz because he's done me favors in the past, and I like to return those favors when I can. And I came by today to thank you. The diner's free and clear. Thank you, and thank you, Chuck. And you're very, very welcome. Everything's working out okay. Oh, you can say that. You know, Buzz, you're a bigger fool than I thought. First you marry someone who's obviously in love with her ex-husband. Then you play protector of someone who's married to someone else. You bring a new meaning to the word masochist. It's called being human, Alan. You really ought to try it yourself sometime. Oh, Alan, it's really good to see you on your feet again. Good. Yeah, I must admit, I'm very surprised to see you here so soon. I gave you a week. I wanted to talk to you before then. Well, I hope this means you came to a decision. We can leave Springfield tonight and forget that anything ever happened. But I don't see your bags. That's because I didn't bring any, Jeffrey. I'm not leaving with you tonight or next week. I came to give you back your bracelet that you left at the firehouse. Oh. <laughs> Is that where I left it? Yes, you know damn well you left it there. You wanted Buzz to find it and confront me with it. No. Is that what happened? Oh, you are something. Yes, he found it. You were trying to drive a wedge between us so that I would be desperate. I would have to come to you the way I was desperate and desolate when I came to you before, hoping to find a way to take care of my son. Which I did. Without question. And I will always, always be grateful to you for that. But it's over two years ago. Many things have changed. You've changed, I've changed, and you have no right to bind me for the rest of my life. I'd like to be on my own now. You know why that's impossible, and you know why you have to stay with me. Well, I have a solution for that, something that will solve all the problems. Then you'll be able to go your way, and I'll be able to go mine. Oh, and this answer would be? Once my probation period is over, you and I will fly to Zurich together, and we will split the fortune 50-50 and have done with it. Just like that? Yes, just like that. I think not. Why? Why not? It would solve all the problems. It's not going to happen. Why isn't it going to happen? Look, do I need to remind you, when we first started our partnership, we agreed to hide the profits so the IRS couldn't catch on to the way we are supporting our lifestyle. Yes, I, I understand it was your idea to get the safe deposit box so that Coop's fortune would be safe in Switzerland. I know all Yes, and you love that idea. And it was our way of looking out for the boy, as well as for each other. Was I right? Oh, that was then, Jeffrey. Listen to me, Jenna. For us to get into the box, they not only require both of our signatures, but a fingerprint match as well. So? We'll both be there together. We'll give it to them. You know, you seem to be forgetting something. We agreed not to touch the cash until things cooled down. To go now, that's very dangerous. Well, I'm willing to take that risk. There is a lot of money in there, Jenna. If the IRS finds out, the boy stands to lose every penny. So do we. Do you think that could really happen? There's a very good possibility. Well, well, in that case, I'll have to think of something else. But I'm not coming back to you. I wanted to get frames for a lot of these pictures, and I never got around to it. Look at that. Look at that right there. It's the first time I took you skiing. <laughs> Oh, is that what you called it? I called it freezing and falling. I believe that's the last time we ever went. Too. Where did you get these? When I first came back to Springfield, I, I called Rusty and Mama, and they sent me boxes and boxes of old family photos. They made me feel, I don't know, not so strange. Like I hadn't missed so much. <laughs> oh, wow. Look at my hair! Look at your hair! <laughs> Which hair is bigger in this picture? What, what look do you think I was going for? There? Oh, I believe that's a little cross between Don Johnson and uh, Don King. <laughs> Looking at these pictures makes me feel like we're doing that show, you know. Reba Shang, this is your life. This is our life. Our old life. 
going to be our life again one day. So, um, <clears throat> you think it'll be uh, going back to Chicago? Yeah, I, I thought I would. I'd like to go with you. You can't. Reba, we've been over this a hundred times. I just want to help you find your sister, that's all. I think together we can do that. I can't even imagine what she might look like. Well, I think you're going to find out pretty soon. I'm afraid, you know. The kind of life that she had. Maybe she didn't even survive. Don't say that. I think about it every day. I have dreams about it. Living the way she lived on the streets like that, you know, living with a bunch of addicts. I think maybe it was better that Mama didn't live long enough to... to see what happened to her little girl. And I think that if I'd just known about all this sooner, I might have been able to help her or, 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 or save her from at least some of this. I mean, what if I'm too late? You're not too late, I'm sure. We're going to find your sister, Rita. And when we do, you're going to be able to help her now in ways that you, you never could have before. That pompous, arrogant... What? Who? Roger? That cockroach, Buzz Cooper. He can get on my nerves more than anyone else can. Buzz is here? Yes, I don't know why my sister continues to be his friend. Oh, I know why. I always liked Buzz. Really? Yeah, be careful. You know, he's a nice guy, and Reva's always treated him pretty shabbily. See, you're not the only one she stuck it to. Reva did not, as you so delicately put it, stick it to me. Oh, really? No. Is that why you went so out of your way to make sure that my marriage stayed intact? I would like to believe that it was because I'm so charming and deserving, but we're, I know better. We're not talking about me, Annie. Oh, uh, yeah, you're right. I just think it's sweet that he's helping Jenna out. I don't want to talk about Buzz, and I don't want to talk about Jenna. I want you to tell me how things are going with Amanda. Okay. From what I could tell, mm -hmm. you are on target. There is something going on with her, but I don't even know what that is. So she just doesn't seem like any bride-to-be that I know. What about her feelings for Roger? Well, unless she's so cool that she doesn't have any feelings at all, she just doesn't seem to be... Counting the days until she can get into bed with him with a marriage license. I knew it! What's wrong? I thought that's what you wanted to confirm. Well, it is, and it is not good news. At least I know that my daughter has not completely lost her mind. Because if she were deeply in love with Roger, I would have her put in the hospital in his old room. But that still does not explain why they are doing this, Annie. I want you to keep a very... Oh. Alan Spaulding. Annie in Chicago. Yes, how did things go? Good. Did you get a name? What? I, I see. Um, okay, if anything else happens, please let me know. What? 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 Is it about Reva? What'd they say? Reva bought the whole story at the Simon House. Oh, that's great! But Annie, she was not alone. Someone was with her. Your husband. No. Annie. No. Annie, I don't want you to panic. No, don't get can't. upset about this. No. <laughs> Alan, he's not with Reva right now. You've got to get it. No. We've got to go back in and greet No, yes. I can't go have dinner. It's just, uh, it's just something I, I have to do first, okay? And, Annie, we'll talk about this later. Please pull yourself together. Now, I'm going to go back in there now. You join us in just a minute, okay? Mm -hmm. Let's calm down.
but it won't be long now. Katie, all I need you to do is I just need you to tell me where Mr. Lewis went. And then he went over to Mrs. Shane's to pick up the kids. Are you sure that that's where he was going? No, I... I don't want you to call him. I'll just, I'll just talk to him when I get home. Thank you. to drink it, Jeffrey. Jenna, I'm sorry I can't accept your offer. That wasn't our original agreement, and uh, a deal is a deal. You're just going to have to get used to it. I'm not letting you go. Chin Chin. <laughs> Alex, think about it. Yeah. Dinner's ready. Oh, well, I'll, I'll see you later. Well, oh, Buzz, let me show you to the door. Alan, I was just going to find you, give you a big kiss goodbye. You know, Buzz, every time I see you, one thought crosses my mind. What will you do next to screw up your life? Well, Alan, thank you for your concern, but I don't think that's going to happen. Oh, no, it will happen. First, you fall in love with Reva and marry her. She's obviously in love with Josh. Then you go to war with me over Fifth Street, and all you get out of it is your greasy diner. Now, every time I look at you, Buzz, I see the word loser written all over your face. <laughs> you just don't get it, do you? I don't think you ever will. I mean, you rant and rattle around this cold pile of stones here. You got more money and power than anybody in the world, and you can, you can tell hundreds of people what to do when they do it. But there are two things, my man, that you do not have. You do not have love, and you do not have a real family. Oh, speaking of real family, I suppose Jenna has told you about being pregnant when she left Springfield two years ago, huh? No, she didn't. Oh. Because she wasn't. Well, you've been taken for a ride again. Not only was she pregnant, Buzz, but she was carrying your child. Guiding Light.